Chapter 12 The first Friday of the new year, Daryl did not walk to the supermarket parking lot to meet Tyree. Instead, he took the back street to school. Daryl pictured Tyree and Rodney standing by the supermarket waiting for him. He wondered what they would think when they realized he was not going to meet them. Daryl could almost hear Tyree yelling and cursing. Daryl knew Tyree and Rodney would try to get the money from him somehow, but he was not going to pay them again, even if Tyree hurt him. Daryl had decided that his days in school were miserable whether he paid Tyree or not, so why pay him? He had been humiliated since he arrived at Blueford. He had lost a chance with Amber Lynn, and he had been robbed of his mother's money for weeks. What more could they do? When Daryl arrived in school, he felt better than he had in months. Knowing the lunch money was in his pocket, not Tyree's, made his whole day more cheerful. He had decided on New Year's Day that he would use the money to buy his own lunch in the cafeteria. For the first time in weeks, Daryl did not carry sandwiches in his backpack. Even though he didn't like most of the food at Blueford, he knew today's lunch would be one of the best he ever had. Daryl got to English class early. Tyree and Rodney had not arrived yet, and Daryl wondered if they were still looking for him at the supermarket. As he waited for Mr. Mitchell to come into the classroom, Daryl could tell that Amber Lynn was watching him. He had been avoiding her all week, even though she looked like she wanted to talk to him whenever they made eye contact. He was still embarrassed about the dance, but he chose to avoid her because he knew Tyree would tease her if he saw them talking. Tyree and Rodney arrived in class at the same time. As they walked up the aisle to their desks, Tyree stopped next to Daryl. Where were you this morning? You owe me ten dollars. Now you're going to have to pay extra or I'll bust your head after school today, he whispered. A droplet of Tyree's spit landed on Daryl's face. Just then, Mr. Mitchell came in and Tyree moved to his desk. For the rest of the class, Daryl tried to ignore what Tyree had said. He didn't know what he would do when Tyree confronted him. He was tired of running, but he was still scared. At lunchtime, Daryl joined Harold in the food line. You didn't pack lunch today? Harold asked. Daryl had never told his friend the full truth about why he always packed his lunch. Nope, Daryl replied. Though the two had been back at school for a few days, Harold had not asked Daryl what happened at the dance. Daryl figured Harold was waiting to see if he would mention it. He still didn't want to. You picked a bad day to buy lunch. Look at that stuff, Harold joked. A server passed Daryl a plate full of meatloaf that looked like a brown sponge covered in chunky brown gravy. Next to the meatloaf was a mushy glob of mashed potatoes and some overcooked peas and carrots. Both boys grabbed a large cup of soda, paid for their food, and began making their way back towards their table. Suddenly, Daryl saw Tyree walking towards him. Daryl's heart raced. He had nowhere to go. At first, Tyree looked as if he might pass right by Daryl, but as he got nearer, he pretended to trip. In one swift motion, Tyree fell forward, reached an arm under Daryl's tray, and flipped it. The tray spilled onto Daryl's body, dumping mashed potatoes, gravy, and vegetables all over his clothes and then falling into a large, slippery mess at his feet. Soda and ice splashed all over his pants. The tray hit the cafeteria floor with a loud crash. For a second, the usual murmur of the cafeteria hushed as students looked to see what happened. Everyone in the lunchroom turned towards the sound. They all stared at Daryl. Then, in a snap, the noise returned. Some students clapped in mock applause. Other, especially those at Tyree's table, began laughing loudly. Daryl sensed people were watching him, eager to see what he would do next. The room grew charged, like the air before a bad storm. Whoops, sorry about that, Tyree said with a grin and walked off towards his friends. Daryl picked up the tray and walked over to his seat across from Harold. He grabbed some napkins and started wiping the food from his shirt. He saw Amber Lynn watching him from her table. She looked concerned. Daryl hated that she had seen what happened. He wanted to talk to her and explain why he left her at the dance. 
that he was trying to protect her from Tyree. But he couldn't talk to her now, not with food dripping down his shirt. Daryl was about to get a new tray of food when he saw Miss B, the nice old woman who worked in the lunchroom, coming out to clean up the spilled food. Daryl watched as she struggled to move a heavy yellow bucket filled with soapy water. He could see by the look on her face that she was in pain. He remembered how she said her back had been sore for months. Daryl watched as she slowly stooped over to pick up the larger pieces of food by hand. He could almost hear her old bones groaning. Anger started to bubble inside Daryl. Daryl got up to help her. He was sick of what always happened at Blueford, at how everyone seemed to ignore how Tyre hurt others like Miss B, Amber Lynn, or himself. Daryl thought of the time at the dance, the days in the locker room, and now in the lunchroom. Too many times people look the other way when they should be doing something, Daryl thought. He remembered his uncle's words. A man's got to stand up when someone else is in trouble, even if it means he might get himself into trouble. Darrow leaned over and scooped up a piece of the spilled meatloaf. As he threw away the greasy chunk, he glanced over at Tyree and his friends at their lunch table. They were laughing wildly and pointing at him. Rodney was almost rolling out of his chair with laughter. Look at that fool, Tyree shouted. Maybe that's his poor mama. No wonder he ain't got no money. His friends erupted in laughter. Miss B did not seem to notice what was being said. Thanks for helping, she said softly to Darrow. Darrow felt as if his chest was about to explode. He never felt so furious, so frustrated. Brian's words from Hatchet echoed deep inside him. Do something, they said. If you want to change, you've got to do something to get it. You better save that food, fool, because you ain't buying lunch again, Tyree called out. Darrell looked down into the mess of spilled soda and mashed potatoes. He saw his own reflection in the brown puddle. Nearby, Miss B strained to lift the water-filled mop out of the bucket. Something inside Darrell snapped. He stared at Tyree. Just shut up, Tyree, Darrell yelled. Tyree turned his head towards Darrell. He looked stunned. His friends stopped laughing. Kids at surrounding tables who had already forgotten about the spilled tray, now looked again at Daryl. What you say, fool? Tyre asked. I said shut your mouth. Boy, are you high or something? You better sit down or I'm going to come over there and hurt you, Tyre said, standing up. Two of his friends stood up with him. Tyre, you ain't nothing but a bully, Daryl said, pausing for a moment. The rest of the cafeteria seemed to groan at Daryl's words. No one in this school likes you. They're just afraid of you. But you know what? I ain't afraid of you no more. You don't scare me. Daryl's pulse throbbed. He felt more alive than ever. He knew Tyree could beat him, but it didn't matter. He was being more honest than he had ever been in his entire life. It felt exciting and powerful. Nearby, Students started chanting, Fight! 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 Miss B backed away. She had seen cafeteria fights before. Daryl knew the lunch monitors would arrive soon to break things up, but right now, he didn't care what happened. Tyre moved quickly over to Daryl. Rodney and two other friends were right behind him. The boy stood around the mess left by the spilled tray. You got a big mouth for such a little man! It's a shame I'm going to have to break it for you. Tyree shoved Daryl. Tyree's friends started to move in on either side of Daryl, but suddenly they stopped. Daryl looked back to see Kevin, Luis, and Craig standing behind him. We got your back, Daryl, Kevin said. Tyree's friends did not challenge Kevin. From now on, the fight was between Daryl and Tyree. No one else was welcome. You got to stop, Tyree. You've been pushing people around for too long. It ain't happening no more. Now why don't you apologize to Miss B and help clean up the mess you made, Daryl said. A large group of students formed a circle around the two boys. Everyone was scrambling to get the best position to see what would happen next. 
Daryl felt like he was in the beginning of another wrestling match. Fight! 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 The chants continued. So what you gonna do about it, little man? Tyrese scoffed, his eyes locked on Daryl's face. Then his lip curled into a smirk. Daryl gazed at him. Even if the lunch monitors were on their way, it would take them a few minutes to clear away all the students. For a moment, the two boys stared at each other in silence. Then Tyre glanced to his side. The glance was slight, as fast as the blink of an eye. To the crowd of students surrounding them, the tiny twitch might have been invisible, but not to Daryl. He saw it and knew what it meant. His body trembled with excitement. He had not been stared down. Tyre's friends had backed away, and now he was alone facing Daryl with dozens of students watching. As the seconds passed, Daryl sensed something new in his eyes, something he recognized well. Beneath the cold smirk on Tyre's face, Daryl saw fear. His heart raced. Then Tyre shoved him. Boy, get out of my face! I had enough of you! The force of the shove threw Daryl back. He nearly lost his footing in the slippery mess. Tyre was definitely stronger than he was, but Daryl was stronger than he used to be. Two months ago, he would have fallen. Now he was just pushed back. Daryl knew he could not beat Tyre physically, but somehow Daryl felt as if he had already beaten him. Fight! 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 Clean up the mess and apologize to Miss B. That's all you gotta do, Daryl demanded. Break it up! Break it up! yelled the teacher's voice from somewhere in the distance. Students reluctantly started moving away from the circle. You going down, boy! Tyrese screamed. He lunged at Daryl like a cornered animal. Instinctively, Daryl dodged Tyrese's charge, using the speed he had gained through wrestling to move out of the larger boy's way. I'm going to kill you, Tyre growled and threw several punches at Daryl's face. Daryl avoided two of them, but the third one glanced off the side of his cheekbone. Over Tyre's shoulder, Daryl could see teachers struggling to make their way into the center of the fight. You want some more, little man? You're going to get it, Tyre said. Tyre came at him again. This time, Daryl decided not to fight Tyre, but to wrestle him. As Tyre came in... Daryl charged at him as if he were an opponent in a wrestling match. He decided to use his favorite wrestling move, the double leg takedown. In one quick motion, Daryl darted underneath Tyre and locked his arms around Tyre's legs. What are you doing, fool? Tyre yelled. The two were so close that Tyre had no room to punch him. Instead, he tried pounding on Daryl's back. Daryl felt Tyre's fist slamming onto his back but the blows didn't have much force. Ignoring them, Daryl quickly hoisted Tyre into the air. Let me go, Tyre yelled, his feet off the ground. Okay, said Daryl. Finishing the takedown, he tossed Tyre to his side and sent the bully crashing down into the cafeteria floor. Just as he let Tyre go, Daryl saw him put his hand down to cushion the fall. Then he heard a loud, wet snap and a scream. Tyre was on the ground, squirming and rolling in the spilled food. He was holding his wrist. It's broke! It's broke! He cried. Soda and mashed potatoes covered his face, and meatloaf was smeared all over his pants. A few bits of vegetables were caught in his hair. It's broke! He whimpered. You broke it! Break it up! The teacher yelled, seizing Daryl. Three other teachers moved the crowd of students back. Mr. Mitchell was one of them. Quickly, he glanced at Daryl and then went to help Tyre. Rodney and the rest of Tyre's friends were silent. They looked stunned. All of them were sent to the principal's office. Daryl knew he would probably be suspended, but he didn't care. For the first time at Blueford, Daryl felt free. He had toppled the bully. In the principal's office, with Mr. Mitchell and Coach Lewis behind him, Daryl told the truth about what had happened since he arrived at Blueford. He explained that he had been teased and tormented for weeks and admitted that he had been giving his lunch money to Tyre. He told everyone about the crushed oranges, the events in the locker room, and the time he was tossed into a trash can. 
He then described how Ty Ray knocked his lunch to the floor and how he could not allow Miss B to clean it up by herself. As he spoke, the tears came. They rolled freely down his face as he recounted all that had happened during his short time at the high school. They were tears of shame, anger, relief, and joy all mixed together, and he let them fall. After a long closed-door meeting with Mr. Mitchell, Coach Lewis, and for a short time, Miss B., the principal chose not to suspend Darrell. She informed him that she was suspending Tyree for three days and that she planned to have a meeting with both boys and their parents. Before she dismissed him, she made Darrell promise to tell her if anyone picked on him again. She also warned Darrell that if he got into another fight, she would be forced to suspend him. Yes, ma'am, he replied. Darrell appreciated that she was not suspending him, but he wondered if she knew how silly the threat of a suspension sounded. After what he had been through, no punishment the principal could give would be worse than the treatment he had already received from students. Holding on to this thought, he thanked the principal. She smiled warmly and dismissed him. It was the end of the school day when Darrell finally left the principal's office. The main hallway was filling with students rushing to get to their lockers and go home. Darrell shouldered his way into the crowded corridor and headed towards his own locker on the other side of the school. Looking at the students around him, Darrell felt as if he were walking through a strange dream. Everything seemed familiar to him, but somehow different. Although he was physically tired, he was also strangely alert and calm at the same time. He also felt bigger not just in relation to everyone else, but as if there were more of him, as if he had somehow added something to himself. It was as if the whole world had shrunk a bit during the time he had been in the principal's office. Instead of rushing through the hallway as he normally did with his head down, Darrell decided to slow down, to look at the people around him. Something has definitely changed, Darrell thought as he made his way through the corridor. He could feel it in his bones in every cell of his body, he was not the person who stepped off the bus from Philadelphia a few months ago. Bluford's once threatening hallways no longer frightened him, and Tyree, the bully who had tortured him for months, had diminished too. Darrell knew he would face Tyree again. The meeting the principal had scheduled for the two boys and their parents would take place early next week. Besides that meeting, there were still months of shared English and gym classes ahead of them. There was also lunch. But now Darrell was not bothered by the thought of seeing Tyree. More powerful than the painful memories was a new memory. The look on Tyree's face when he cowered before Darrell on the cafeteria floor, clutching his shattered wrist. In that instant, Tyree's power over Darrell had been broken. Darrell walked past the hallway where Tyree and Rodney once shoved him. He wondered what Tyree and his friends would do in the weeks to come. Would they seek revenge? Would someone else try to fill Tyree's shoes? Probably. It seemed no matter where he looked, in Philadelphia, at Blueford, on the news, or in his own family, there were always bullies and victims. But even if they came after him, it didn't matter. Darrell wouldn't remain quiet or give them money if they threatened him. He wouldn't run away from them anymore. Things are going to be different around here. Darrell thought, leaving the old hallway behind him. And he was certain Tyree knew it, even as he sat in a nearby hospital having a cast made for his broken hand. The crowds in the hallways were thinning as Darrell rounded the corner and went to his locker. Bending to grab his books, he heard some students gathering quietly beside him. He turned to face Amberlynn, Harold, and Kevin. The anxious looks on their faces showed that they cared about him. Hey, guys, Darrell said. A smile spread across his face. Amberlynn threw her arms around his shoulders and gave Darrell a warm hug. He closed his eyes and wrapped his arms around her. Kevin slapped his back affectionately. Nice takedown, Darrell, he said with a grin. Darrell Mercer, you're the man, Harold yelled excitedly. Everybody's saying that. Darrell was grateful for them. They were his friends, his new friends. Because of them, he would never again be alone at Blueford. Thanks for waiting for me, 
he said. He thought they deserved to know all that had happened to him over the past few months, and he wanted to tell them. But he knew if the words came, the tears would fall again. He could barely hold them back even as he thanked them. He decided he would tell them everything another day. I mean it, guys. Thank you. You're the man, Harold yelled again even louder than before, and Kevin slapped Daryl's back again. Come on, let's get out of here, Amberlynn said, tugging Daryl by his shirt. Looking at the three of them, Daryl knew the long nightmare that began when he left Philadelphia had finally ended, and a new day filled with hope and possibility had begun. Together with his friends, he walked down the hall and out the front doors of Blueford High, This has been a Townsend Press production from the Bluefoot series of books, The Bully, written by Paul Langan and read by Jamil Gaines. This book was produced by Audiobrite and features the music of Kenyon Whittington. For more information, visit our website at townsendpress.com. <laughs>